Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to discuss adding randomness to stories within Sugarcube 2.36. Now, this is part of a sub-series on using JavaScript. I previously talked about in another video how Sugarcube sits on top of JavaScript. And when we're working with Sugarcube, particularly working with its functionality and working with its macros, we're also and always working with JavaScript at the same time. So something to remember as we go through this video is that we will be working with JavaScript, although it will be slightly hidden or slightly obscured by how Sugarcube does things, but it's always JavaScript behind the scenes. But let's work through some examples here. So we see example one, I am using the set macro. Now we saw in another video as I was reviewing JavaScript concepts that the set macro follows the same pattern that we create variables with in JavaScript. In JavaScript, this would be let example equal something. In macro usage within Sugarcube, it's set example, and this is a story-wide variable, notice the dollar sign, two, and this is using something called random one comma 10. This right here is the use of a method. It's a little bit obscured by the fact that it looks like it's a function, but remember that whenever a function's part of an object, we call it a method. In Sugarcube, there are lots of existing functionality, sets of functions, we use that are part of methods that Sugarcube provides to us. In this case, we're sending data in. Remember, a function is just a kind of sub-part of a larger program. So Sugarcube provides lots of ways we can do things, and then we can access them using their names. So this says provide a random number between a minimum and a maximum, 1 to 10. And we're sitting... Right here, the story wide variable example to that, and then we asking it, the variable was something. So if we play the story from this part, we get the value was nine. If we play it again, we get the value was eight. And we will continue to get numbers one to 10, right here. So often we want to provide randomness to our stories. In Sugarcube, we can use a function, a method, provided by Sugarcube called random. When we use this method, we have a minimum and a maximum number we're using it with. So let's look at a second example here. So whenever we want to kind of instantly or immediately provide some type of value within Sugarcube, we can use a macro called print. Print behind the scenes will convert whatever it got back from a method or whatever it computes and then show it. So this says, go get a random number between 1 to 20, the minimum and the maximum, and then print it, which is to say, don't set it to the variable of value, simply put it as part of the passage. So if we change right here, the start of the story to example 2, build and play, we'll notice 6. So if I wanted to save the data right here, and we're using the random method, I could use 1 to 10 and set example 2, whatever the result was. Or, if I simply wanted to show it without saving it, I could use the print macro to achieve the same end. So let's look at a completely different example, but using the same thing we've been using. So if I use the if macro right here, if random 1 to 3, the result of whatever this is, is 1, so a third of the time, then we will see the text right here. We will only see this 33% of the time. So right here uses the if macro to achieve a very similar thing. Often when we're creating stories, we want kind of dynamic or random content. And this allows us to use the random method provided by Sugarcube to achieve this effect. We can say if the result of something, so 1 to 3, 1 to 20, whatever we're looking for percentage-wise, is some percentage, is some number, we can show some outcome. Across this video, we have looked at three different examples of using the random method provided by Sugarcube. It wants a minimum and a maximum, 1 to 10, 1 to 20, whatever we're looking for. And we can use it with story-wide variables working with the set macro or work with the if macro to test it against something. We can also, if we want, use the print macro to just simply produce or put as part of the passage some number. In each case, we're again working with random, the method provided by Sugarcube, as part of working within JavaScript to get some random number, minimum and a maximum, within Sugarcube 2.36. Thanks for watching.